welcome to today's show. Uh, today it's all going to be about biology, uh, about how it goes on around the world in some forests and everything, how to enrich plants, how to do that uh, with other ways as well, how that happens in nature and how to do that with animals, how animals do it and so on. One thing that, uh, that will be in the show uh, will be the biggest animals, where they live, how they live, like for instance the Amazon and the anaconda and how it exists, how it lives and so on. The anaconda is the biggest snake in the world. It is actually a dinosaur snake, if somebody would like to see it from that point of view. It's a, it is a dinosaur snake and uh, it only exists in the Amazon. And the reason why it exists in the Amazon is because only there are uh, atoms uh, good enough and rich enough to sustain it in life so that they can exist. Uh, let's say around the world, anacondas used to exist all the time, many places around the world, but their food source died out, so then so did they and so on. Uh, like, uh, and sort of that uh, sort of explains the dinosaur story and everything as well. So today's show will be all about biology, the physics, some equations and how we can through that physics make better food, make better forests, so on and so on. One also uh, interesting thing in today's show will be the alpha forest, so how it could be made, how to make even better forests than the Amazon is and so on and so on with wildlife and animals and big animals that if the forest is enriched with enriched foods then the animals would get bigger and bigger and bigger just like the dinosaur forests used to be and have big dinosaurs in them. So it would be sort of like even Jurassic Park, but through a physics that can really be done, really, un really understood and everything. So let's say if this was uh, that type of forest that we would make scientifically, all that we would need to have there is is uh, canals of uh, pipes carrying enriched atoms that water the plants. Then the plants and food is made out of that, the animals eat that and the cycle goes on and on and the animals get more and more enriched and better and better uh, because, because science sort of helps and shows how to make everything and yes of course uh, one big problem is uh, we have science all over the world and everywhere in uh, thousands of things but just not in, in food. But food and biology is also something important, but there's no scientific progress there at all, you know. So today's show, I thought to sort of uh, make about that, about how it is around the world and how we can scientifically and in work uh, make that farms, forests, animals, all that enriched and sort of speak. That is a huge, huge physics that will take many, many shows and many, many, Future shows will be about it, but this is like the start of that biology story and so on. So the first equation is a simple equation to explain. I wrote down these equations today, uh, sort of fast, but in a simple uh, way so that it is understandable to anyone, not just to physicists and people who know uh, maybe more about physics. But I thought to explain it in short and uh, simply that it's uh, understood uh, easily. It is zoomed in now because the equations are what is supposed to be seen uh, so that they are properly understood. So the first equation is the atom equals life times the energy. Uh, first of all, the human body is made inside the, the mother's womb where the atoms are enriched to turn into a baby. So those are some very, very high, high enrichments that uh, happen inside sperm. The sperm has that energy in it that starts enriching atoms and turning them into the human body. But the sperm and the mother's womb is where that high, high energy enrichment happens. But still, which atoms are used also adds to that, how good the human body will be made and so on. Once we have a highly enriched food, we will have also children in the future will also be live longer, be young longer and so on and so on is the hope of the physics and everything. So the atom equals life times the energy it has in it. Because when a person eats the uh, food, he eats the stomach, 
uh, turns it into atoms and molecules. People know that. And then the blood carries atoms and molecules and plasmas even in case of kids. And, uh, and in case of us too, just we don't have enough of that plasma to sustain our bodies because our bodies too are a lot bigger than children's and so on. Uh, but our bodies too have plasma, just not enough of it to keep us young for a long period. And that's why the enrichment of atoms is needed because that's where that plasma comes from. Uh, from the atoms that are in the food and the more they are enriched, the bigger and bigger and bigger they get, which is the E energy, the bigger they get and then when we eat them, the more energy it gives to our blood and the blood gives that energy to our atoms of our body, our cells as well. And that's how a person uh, can stay young longer, live longer and so on, is the aim and goal of this part of the physics and everything. So the atom that a person eats and that it is made out of equals life, how long he's going to live. Uh, times the energy that's inside the atoms of the food he eats and of the, his own body. Uh, here atom means all atoms, all food, all molecules that people eat, drink, so on and so on. Not just carbon atoms, but all food and drink that people eat and are made out of. So, so and uh, the atom equals lifetimes energy through enrichment can also be added where that energy is increased Therefore, that it gives life longer and so on. <coughs> so the next equation, which is an explanation of biology, how that all happens in biology, enrichment, natural enrichment. Uh, what I'm doing is also 100% natural and organic, but I'm doing it through a physics. Not how, uh, how it happens in nature, but I'm also adding a hundred times faster and better ways to do it. So that's sort of the part of the physics as well. So the atom, this is about nature now, is divided by enrichment, which equals its energy, times how many of them there are in biology. Times enrichment, that's in all biology, that is divided by, uh, the first is PL, plant life. So the plant life, there is about 391,000 plant species on Earth that are known. So, And I put times five because in average a plant has five times of different carbon atoms and different types of atoms. It has roots, it has the wood, it has the greens, it has the flowers and it has the fruit. And the fruit is the most enriched, of course, of all five, in many cases. But in some plants, roots are actually more enriched than even the fruit it gives. Some roots give life, people live for a hundred years. Uh, some old people that had those old ways to eat some roots and so on, they would live to 120 and so on. Uh, but so, but I put times five because in average a uh, plant has five different carbon atoms that are enriched. It has other atoms, of course, calcium, nitrogen, uh, hydrogen, yada, yada, yada. But uh, there are five different types of enrichment of all those atoms in it. Some plants, of course, have a lot more. That's correct as well, but in average it's five. <laughs> then the enrichment of biology divides into eight million Sorry. That's the computer doing its thing. So 8,700,000 is uh, how many animals there are on Earth. So recorded species known, there is 8,700,000 of them on Earth. So types of animals, bugs, insects worms, uh, birds, uh, tigers, any type of animal on earth. So there is 8,700,000 different species and of course they have uh, a lot, a lot, uh, tons of different atoms, molecules in them, uh, many, many different ones, hydrogen, calcium, uh, bone, meat, and uh, brains and so on and so on, but on average I put times 10. Because on average, 
uh, there is brains, which is one type of uh, uh, one type of enrichment of carbon atoms and other atoms. There is meat, which is also mostly just carbon atoms. Meats of all animals is basically mostly carbon atoms, but millions of different types of enriching them. And there is then organs. There is skin. There is bone, and uh, different types of organs, of course, are different types of enrichment. Some are to be flexible, some are to be tighter, some are to be this, some are to be that, some are to uh, be livers to house more blood, so on and so on. So I put on average times 10. So every animal, that's 8,700,000 different ones of them, has about 10 different types of enrichments of carbon atoms in it. And then there are sea animals uh, recorded, uh, recorded uh, one million uh, different types of sea animals exist in the oceans and everything. And they too have about times 10 different carbon atoms enrichments and so on. Some of course more, some have than 10. All of them have more than 10 probably, but on average I put 10. Now, most of the sea animals are unknown, people know that, so there is probably a lot more than a million, but I put a million just to make it, uh, to see what the whole thing is about when it's understanding. And that all, when it comes together, comes to the atomic number 6, which is carbon, uh, five, uh, 6 neutrons, 6 protons, and 5 electrons. Uh, the atomic number 6, which is C, carbon, comes to about 10,910,000 different, 10, different versions of enrichment of carbon atoms. Just is there in known nature when it is per animal. Here it is later explained in more detail down there. There is about a hundred million different types of enrichments of carbon atoms. I explained in earlier shows that I will write down the table of elements of carbon atoms and different enrichments of them, uh, but uh, I sort of came to numbers that are as about a hundred million of the different ones just on Earth. Now, let's say we mention space, well then that's, that's that's probably so many carbon atoms in space that uh, it's like infinite times infinity and so on. But this is to make it uh, uh, understandable in short and easier way to understand this. So there is uh, 10,910,000 different types of uh, carbon atoms per animal, so per living being on planet Earth that are recorded. So, and then a person can see uh, out of all these 10 million carbon atoms, there are some more enriched, some less. We eat chicken, pigs, and mostly animals that are made out of uh, that are made out of grass and some uh, uh, leaves that they eat and so on. So that is sort of sort of. One scientific question would be, well, out of all these carbon atoms, what we eat, basically, some plants and maybe 10 animals, not even more than 10, ducks, geese, uh, are rarely ever eaten, people eat them rarely. Okay, we eat a lot from the sea, that is correct, we, but even there, it's crabs, it's shrimp, and it's fish, mostly, but different types of fish, and okay, are eaten there too. But still, when you come to a restaurant, no restaurant has 10 million items on the menu, of course, that's understood. Still, our menus are like way, way below that. But this is actually what science is offering us and Earth as a whole, uh, what types of carbon atoms exist and we can enrich all of them and turn them into something better and healthier and so on. So to move down now to the next equation, uh, the atom uh, through molecules, it can be atoms or molecules, food or drink, doesn't matter, are sphere. So sphere in my physics means like squared but sphere. 
So sphere means an atom is a sphere. So when an atom of food, any food, comes into your blood, it's a sphere. And uh, the more it is enriched, the bigger and bigger that sphere is. Because the more energy there is in, in an atom, the heavier and bigger and bigger it is. Unless it's antimatter, but we have not made, yet made antimatter that can be eaten, of course. But in the future, that's a very interesting and very smart possibility, probably. So the atom, or through molecules, is sphere. So they're all spheres, and it equals energy through chemistry divided by temperature. So this is now an equation, what happens with atoms when they are in blood. So we eat any food, any drink, but the digestive system breaks it apart into atoms. Everybody knows that. And then the blood picks up those atoms and carries them into the body. And that's what feeds the human body and gives it energy. Even to the human brain, people know uh, the energy of the atoms and molecules we eat or drink, uh, that's what gives us energy even to the brain and to the whole body. Let's say in case of drugs, uh, people, uh, they smoke weed. weed uh, the carbon atoms of weed and other uh, molecules and the atoms, they go into the lungs, go into the blood and come to the brain and that energy of weed makes people high and so on. So that's just the chemistry that's in those atoms of weed, that would be, or cocaine, or something, which is just a simple to point out explanation. So the atom equals energy through chemistry divided by temperature. So when the atoms of food come into our blood, they become the quantum realm temperature of our blood. Now, we are, everybody knows, 37 degrees is the blood of people. Everybody knows that. And then so is our blood, of course. But in the quantum realm, it's totally not like that. In the quantum realm, if there is nitrogen in your blood, well, it's, uh, its temperature in the quantum realm is way, way cold if it was, let's say, compared to hydrogen. Uh, which you also get from eating uh, fruits and from plants and so on. You get hydrogen and you get nitrogen. It's a very big possibility when you eat fruit. Uh, your DNA is made out of hydrogen. People know that. So when a kid is growing up, from the hydrogen in his blood, his DNA is made and so on. And then how much that hydrogen is enriched, that decides the, his future offspring, how they're going to look, and so on and so on. His genes, his appearance, and so on. That's all decided in the hydrogen of the blood when somebody's a kid and he's making his DNA, and so on. But that also then is decided by how clean is the water that you water your plants with. Therefore, that's why I water my plants all with bought spring water and not just tap water, of course. <laughs> so, okay, in the blood, the energy of the atom, which is food eaten, through chemistry divided by temperature. Temperature is also important because temperature decides how fast and how much, uh, how fast and how the energy of atoms of food turns into plasma and goes into the blood. So that decides how fast you're going to get all the energy you need to stay young and live longer and so on. So, but all that happens through outgoing mass. Like I explained in earlier shows, all atoms, all molecules, all subatomic particles have incoming mass and have outgoing mass. So, two in blood, the atoms of food and drink, they have incoming mass and they have outgoing mass. That outgoing mass is small, maybe a meter of one atom, uh, a few meters, that's an educated guess, but it's enough to fill the blood with, uh, with plasma, of course. So through outgoing mass, which would be like sunlight coming out of a sun, uh, out of an atom in blood comes out its energy, and that fills the blood with plasma. Through outgoing masses of those atoms, 
uh, calculated number in my physics of uh, the outgoing masses of those atoms, uh, their energy moves 540,000 kilometers per second when it is darkness, therefore. So the plasma, when it comes into the blood, the atoms of food, the energy is coming out of it uh, 540,000 kilometers per one second. But that is the same number at which at which speed the atoms of the human body are spending energy. So by that physics calculation, if we could just reach that goal, how much energy we put in is how much energy we waste, well then a person can stay young. He doesn't grow old then at all, if we reach that speed. But that sort of shows that uh, that we uh, put a lot less energy into the body than we spent. That's sort of a, that explanation. So the outgoing masses then carry the plasma into the blood and the blood carries that plasma into our atoms of our body is the, the explanation which is all correct and 100% correct. So the energy of the food, the food and the molecules it comes into the blood, turns into a plasma that the blood is, and then the blood carries that into our atoms of our food. Uh, people know that that in all parts, even the skin, there is blood, even the skin on top. Only the skin, a few layers of atoms on the top, very top of the skin, maybe a millimeter, that's where there is no blood. But as soon as the deeper it goes, then there is blood. So blood has to reach all the parts of the body in order to sustain them in life and living and young and so on. And so we have now, once that physics is understood, we have 12 million, that's supposed to be uh, 10 million, 910, I made a mistake there, didn't fix that one, 10 million, 900, 910 through 10 to the m divided by 8. So that is how many different types of enrichment of atoms there is that we can we can uh, that we can have as food and enrich. So that's what biology is basically giving us all those options and everything. I mentioned in the earlier video to write down the table of elements of all carbon atoms, but when one understands how many of them there is, uh, it's just gonna take a few more time. So, but there will be a separate one for plants, separate one for animals, and separate one for fish. But so far, sharks are actually the best enrichment ones possible known because Greenland sharks live 300 years. So that's the highest enrichment known currently that we know about. That's a Greenland shark because evidence says she lives for 320 years. Some Greenland sharks were found that are actually 320 years old. And the only reason why that is because its atoms are the most enriched out of all these 10 million ones mentioned. And that's why a Greenland shark lives 300 years. And that is the element of the atoms, which is all living creatures, divided by the atomic number 6, carbon, times all the enrichment in nature we know about, so currently know about. But when we take this physics into reality, like I have done with plants, well, then we're going to enrich that even a lot more than even Greenland sharks and everything. Or if we had, let's say, a farm of Greenland sharks and gave them some enriched food that we are making in science and physics, but totally natural and good, well, then Greenland sharks would live 400 years, 500 years, then we would eat their meat and so on and so on, and people can understand how that goes on. So, the enrichment of food that comes into the human body, that's the enrichment of atoms and food, equals their size. 
So let's say an atom is like that, and uh, that's uh, an ordinary carbon atom. So it's like that big. But if we enrich it five times, well then the atoms will be five times bigger. And then when it comes into the blood, it will give five times more energy to the human body and then the human being will live longer, be young longer and so on, is the aim and goal of the physics. So enrichment equals the size of the food, the atoms, which is divided by their energy. So the more energies the atom is, the bigger bigger it is and the heavier heavier it is. Of course, people can understand that. Times, uh, this is a calculation of all carbon atoms on Earth, different ones. Because some animals have 50 of them, maybe different carbon atom enrichments just in one animal, one species of animal. So, I can, I, it comes to the number of 100 million different carbon atom enrichments are in biology on planet Earth, actually. That's the number I came up with. So, on a table of elements of carbon atoms, <laughs> that's how big the the table of elements would actually be 100 million so so that's really a lot a lot but of course you know if uh, thousands of people around planet earth started working on it then we would actually reach to know uh, more and more about each and every individual that enrichment because let's say a greenland sharks enriches carbon atoms of its meat uh, the meat of sharks, tuna fish and so on is basically just carbon, mostly. Some have omega-3s and have oil. Sharks actually have even oil in them that cuts probably from hydrogen and so on. Shark meat, uh, I have eaten it, has a lot of oil in it. When you make it, you don't even need oil. It actually has oil in it when you fry it and eat it. Some sharks, uh, when I have eaten them in the past. So, but let's say a Greenland shark enrichment is the best one we know of on planet Earth. But when we go into the quantum realm and discover what type of particles are those in the Greenland shark. The only difference between a Greenland shark carbon atom and some other animal is just its size. Because when a Greenland shark enriches its carbon atom, it's about that big. When we enrich our carbon atom, it's about that big. That's like a, like a simple explanation. And the only difference is there, the Greenland shark has tons, tons more of that plasma in its blood. Because when we are kids, uh, carbon atoms come into our body, they enrich to turn into our meat, and they entangle to the meat and a person grows. And that's in all biology, that same thing does a Greenland shark. But in the blood of a Greenland shark, there is tons, tons more plasma. So what does that tell you? That says scientifically actually that the Greenland sharks eats a hundred times better food that w than we eat and then she has uh, three times more of that plasma in its blood when she's growing up. Plus, it's a lot bigger than us, of course, and then therefore it eats a lot more than us, and so on. But that's a simple equation that explains that. So, enrichment and the scientific enrichment that uh, people can go into and everything, that equals the size of the atom, which is divided by how much energy it has in it. But energy is basically the same stuff, you know. Energy is basically that subatomic particles coming out of atoms that I explained. In plants, it's green. So an atom goes through a plant, comes to a tomato, and it's green. You water, uh, I water it, let's say, with eggs, some plants. So eggs are yellow and they are white. But the white and yellow carbon atoms of an egg, they go through the plant, but as they come to the tomato, they are then green. Because as the atom goes through the plant, 
it changes color because tons and tons of energies go into it that make it green. So that's like a simple explanation to, to go into the quantum realm and understand. In our blood, an atom comes into it, but our body turns it into the color of our skin. So it becomes white, like skin. In black people, it's a different type of size of energy, therefore it's dark. And black people are black then, and so on. So it's just a little difference in size and energy, basically, is what it is explaining, and so on. And maybe even density, you know. But density is also size and weight and everything, of course. <laughs> so to go further, uh, enrichment equals then energy of food and atoms. And that is divided by the size sphere, because atoms are spheres, everybody knows that which equals the mass of the atom divided by the weight of the atom. <laughs> which equals the mass, sorry, of food divided by the weight of the atom. So many people are trying to make tomatoes that are like uh, changed uh, unnatural. They add chemicals to it, genetic engineering and so on and so on to make a big tomato. But people don't understand that we don't need the, those uh, chemically changed tomatoes or any type of soft foods. What we need is to change the atoms themselves to make them bigger and bigger and bigger. And then let's say if a chicken is 10 times more enriched than an ordinary chicken today, well then a chicken will be about that big. No, sorry, a chicken will be like five times bigger than an ordinary chicken. Chicken is about that big, then it'd be about two meters, would be a chicken. And there people can understand then, why did uh, dinosaurs need enriched food? In some uh, explanations of my physics, I explained that dinosaurs died out because there was no more enriched food good enough for them. But uh, the energy of an atom is divided by its size, sphere, which equals its mass, so that's its size. So the more an atom is enriched, the more, the bigger and bigger and bigger it gets. Therefore, if we, let's say, make a chicken out of enriched atoms, well then the chicken will be twice as big. If it's more enriched, even more and more and more. So then we have more and more food uh, also, there is more and more people on planet Earth and more and more food is needed anyways to sustain the bigger and bigger population on planet Earth. So, uh, through that, enrichment equals energy and the size of the atom. So, the more an atom is enriched, the bigger and bigger it gets. The more health it gives, the more uh, youth it gives and the longer lifespan it gives. And times, that happens, times how many times it is enriched. Times the number of enrichment. So if it is enriched, let's say 10 times, well then it's 10 times bigger and 10 times more energy it has. If it's enriched uh, two times, well then it's just two times. So the more it is enriched, the bigger and more energy it has. And times that one gets life how long a person lives. So the more enriched atoms we eat, the more, the more life and youth it gives us, basically. And to animals, to animals we eat, and so on and so on. And some calculations of my physics, although this is an educated uh, guess, so to speak, if atoms were enriched 35 times, currently on Earth the most enriched ones are uh, well, a Greenland shark, and that would be maybe, maybe like, uh, or maybe like 20 times, 20, 24 times enriched, maybe a Greenland shark, but it, actually it's not, but that's how much plasma it has in its blood. Uh, a Greenland shark uh, has maybe up to 9, 10 times enriched atoms uh, that it's made out of. But, uh, but uh, uh, let's say a polar bear 
on, on the Antarctic, it is eight, nine times enriched atoms on, on, uh, on, uh, on it that the polar bear is made out of, and so on. But some calculations in my physics say that if atoms were enriched 35 times, and there are no, on Earth, known enriched more than 10 times, 10 times, 8 times would be like the top. But if we, through physics and understanding this scientifically, enrich food 35 times and then we eat it, <coughs> through my calculations and physics, it tells me that it would give 1,000 years of life to a human being if he eats every day food that is enriched 35 times. That's like a goal and aim of this physics. And that's what the math is actually saying. Uh, people would be actually uh, even maybe surprised to learn that uh, the most food we eat is like three times, maybe four times enriched. Grass grows up from ground and water, which is the lowest enriched atom on planet Earth. A cow eats that, turns it into milk, so then that's two times enriched atoms. And we uh, throughout our life, most average people on planet Earth are made out of milk. Of course, a lot many other things, but mostly from milk, one would say. A baby drinks milk, of course, everybody knows when babies are babies. So that's two times enriched atoms. Okay, milk is a very high and good enrichment of atoms in nature, because it is meant for infants and for them to grow, and gives good plasmas in blood and everything. But that's two times enriched milk. So a Greenland shark eats something eight times enriched. It's just in nature an explanation. But if we have food that is 35 times enriched, <coughs> uh, through my calculations it says it would give life to a person for 1,000 years. Uh, some studies that I did in in, in, in my writings and in books is that the biggest atoms on Earth are eight times enriched actually. And that would be polar, bear, polar bears, Greenland sharks and crocodiles in Australia. Crocodiles live around 100 years. Polar bears, nobody knows how long they would live because the cold or lack of food kills them before their average lifespan. But Greenland sharks are the ones that live the longest, as far as we know. So in short, energy gives energy to human body and to the mind. So a person would feel better, concentrate more, and so on and so on. Also from enriched food is, the, is what the, 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 the aim of the physics and goal is saying and thought. So, so the enriched atoms, food, and the whole physics is, gives energy to the mind and to the human body, and a person will also feel better and, and act better and so on and so on. Everybody knows kids are always happy, <laughs> and one would ask the question why, of course. But scientifically speaking, kids are always happy because their brains are full of that plasma energy that is very, very good and very, very, and keeps people even healthy uh, psychologically and happy and uh, concentration and so on. So, so kids are always happy, okay, because they're kids, of course, but also because their brain has the right energy in it and people feel better and so on and so on. And, uh, and our kids, basically. <sighs> Uh, I once drank, I once drank one of these juices, but I drank a little bit more than I usually do when I was making it, when I was whizzing it. And I ate some very enriched uh, stuff, like a whole glass of it. And there was enriched eggs in it, enriched honey in it, enriched, uh, enriched a lot of stuff that is in all the leaves and everything. And I drank the whole thing at once. And what happened to me was that uh, I was concentrating a lot to work on the plants, uh, fertilizing them, moving them, uh, <coughs> watering them, and so on and so on. And I was concentrating so much on that, it happened to me a few nights ago, 
that uh, after I drank that whole juice uh, of the whizzing uh, of the of the plants and not the fruits but just the, the the greens and so on and five hours passed like I was working for five hours uh, with around all the plants and everything but I was sort of feeling like only a half an hour one hour passed that's what I was feeling like because because I was so much into my work and everything and then when I looked at the clock I realized that it was almost morning it was like around three o'clock in the morning already and I was like I couldn't believe it that it's three o'clock I thought it was a lot around 11 12 and so on but that's just something that happened to me and then I realized that all that energy enriched honey, enriched eggs, enriched uh, that all the atoms enriched that are in the leaves just but the fruits will be even more enriched it all came to my brain a lot because I drank a whole big bunch of it I usually drink it little by little a lot of it came to my brain and I was so much concentrating and working so fast and so high and I, and I was feeling like hyper like fast fast uh, feeling like very very like I had a lot of strength a lot of energy and so on and then I realized that it was almost morning you know and I didn't even realize it before I looked at the clock and everything so as the physics is showing that there is about a hundred million different types of carbon atom enrichments in nature that we know of on planet Earth. So uh, I did point out that I will write down that table of elements, but it's just going to take a lot more time, of course, and a hundred million of them, that's really a lot. Of course, people can understand that. Uh, I did explain eight of them that we eat and so on and I will mention one thing about farming and everything the the waste let's say of cows uh, that is a half enriched atom it's not even two times enriched it's just half so it's just grass that's falling apart basically and the only reason that, it's, that farmers use it in plants is because it's chemically sticking together it's already broken apart into atoms and that's the only reason why it's good in farming but uh, I would point that out as useless in the future and not so good because making in a blender uh, juice of highly enriched atoms like honey, eggs and so on is a lot, lot better because those atoms have a lot more energy in them than grass that than, than the grass that animals eat, of course. Some animals eat uh, meats, so in forests and so on, insects and so on and so on. And, and another thing I got to point out, organs of animals are also good to eat, especially young ones. Uh, organs of animals, some people's organs fall apart, you know. Uh, when people grow old, well, the first thing that falls apart to them and they get very, very sick and die, well, that's actually their organs failing. Because we people eat a lot of meat because it's tasty, but we don't eat any organs. Organs you can find in sausages and that's just some of them. And so it's a little bit of that is there and that's it. But actually organs of fish and animals have the energy in them to fill the human organs with energy that they need to sustain life better and so on. Because uh, people, we, we eat all the time meat, but the energy in meat sort of enriches our meat, but not the brain and not the organs, but sort of speaking, the brain and the organs is sort of a lot more important than meat. Meat is just muscle and so on. And uh, what I thought to point out as well is graphene. Out of all the simple atoms we eat, so the food in supermarkets and so on, graphene has more of that energy of youth in it than all the food in the supermarkets. Is what I came through understanding in physics and through evidence and so on and so on. But of course, graphene has to be enriched more and more times to have more and more of that energy and to blend that energy 
sort of speak faster and different with food so that it turns into totally food when it comes to the blood. Let's say a person would drink some graphene right now. Well, a question is, will graphene even turn into Will graphene even turn into that plasma in blood or will it not? But once graphene is enriched to be meat, to be plants, then his energy is turning into biological energy and then it will turn into that plasma very quickly and very fast. Yes, graphene has tons of that energy that gives youth in it, but when it comes into the blood, will it turn into plasma or will it just be some graphene atoms floating around. I mean, yes, uh, graphene cannot cause cancer. Uh, sometimes I thought that, that if it's inhaled, it might cause cancer because other carbon atoms, carbon monoxide and so on, cause cancer. But for graphene to entangle, it uh, doesn't really happen that way. So graphene probably cannot cause cancer at all because the chemistry in the atom is totally different. And graphene is not a smoke, it's something different and so on. When graphene evaporates, I used to watch that in experiments. I did tons of experiments in graphene to make bulletproof suits years ago to make stealth aircraft. I also uh, did some experiments with graphene and when graphene evaporates, uh, sometimes it just goes up like like it is you can't really see it but you can feel it and smell it as it's evaporating but when it is in hot water it sort of goes like like uh, when there's a hot lake during a cold night and it sort of goes up like that and so on with steam and so on So that is something very, very important to point out in physics, in plants, because right now it's uh, done around plants is what I'm doing and experimenting. So if that's a plant like that, well, as the atom goes through it, so any atom, it is filled with energy and then it comes to the fruit. But as it is going through and coming to the fruit, it is filled with energy and then it turns into the fruit. So, and the fruit gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But what the plant is made out of is what energy it has in it. And then as the atoms go through it, they get tons more energy if that plant is made out of enriched stuff, of course. is the physics quantum realm, easy explanation of everything. So that's that on this part about the, about the equations and everything. Uh, they can be seen and understood. And these are equations I wrote down today just a little bit go into this physics and explain it through some equations and physics and everything. And to point out that it's really that it's really physics, yes, it's new and it's just starting. It's something that I went into. I used to write about it uh, uh, in my books, uh, which are which were my discoveries in books. Uh, the graphene that can give long life, cure, cure aging and so on and so on and enrich atoms and everything but I never really went into it as experiments and now uh, many of these plants that I am explaining those are actually extreme experiments to me what each atom is doing, uh, its color its, and so on and so on and I follow the progress of each plant, each atoms, what's in it and how it's functioning and so on so. Okay, so now I thought to explain uh, how little and how much people know about this in the farming world, well some and so on, and how little it's known even globally and everywhere because this is a totally new physics but some people know some things about it tiny little bit and they try it and so on but it seems people don't really understand what they're doing and everything in a, I don't mean in farming but in a, in a like a, a physics how to enrich a really food grade in this new way and everything and so on so this is a video also from YouTube uh, what happens when you bury a fish under a tomato plant and this is one of the farmers, uh, this is a person who has a YouTube channel about farming and so on something I watch as well 
about how to pick up these farmer things that I don't know about. And uh, this is one video I came across, so I thought to point it out. Uh, how, how, how they see some things and how they do it. Because we live local to the ocean, we've got a lot of places like that. So we've got some moss bunker here. I'm going to slice it into about threes to help it break down quicker. I'm not going to show you that though, so I'll bring you guys along after I'm finished. Alright, I have this sliced up in threes now. Well, okay, so there he says, I'm going to slice it up into three pieces to help it break down quicker. You know, but everybody knows uh, for a fish to decay and to turn into atoms, well, it takes uh, maybe a year and so on for it to totally break down. It'll take well, more than a year, four years basically, it would take for it to break down. It would start to rot away, expand, turn into many, many things because of the chemistry and the temperature. But for the meat, which is the carbon, to break down, it would take actually a little bit more than that. Because it is solidly entangled, especially the skin and everything. One thing I wanted to mention is, you want to make sure you're playing this deep. Because you could have some animals and stuff trying to dig it up. So it works well with the tomatoes, I think, because we're going to have it nice and deep. So I'm going to even dig even... And okay, there he says some animals might come over and eat it away. But even if he buries it deep, uh, down there, there is... Tons of insects would just come over and eat it. Ants, worms, uh, all kinds of bugs would smell it and eat it. A little more. Take a little more of the sand out. And then at the bottom we're going to have this, this moss bunker, this fish. I'm going to put it in three different pieces, just like that. I've often heard people just using fish heads, but I wanted to get something with all the guts and everything in it because I think that'll add a lot of trace minerals because this fish is going to already out. See, so some people have realized that it is very good to use fish and animals when you're making tomato plants. And that's smart, that's smart. But the big problem there is that people don't, it seems they don't know how to do it, which my new physics totally greatly explains. Uh, people, they say they've been using fish heads. Fish heads have brains and stuff in it, and the organs of fish are probably very good for that too. Uh, because fish heads people throw away anyway, they're free, people just throw them away in the trash, there's tons of them. Uh, but the big uh, point about it is, people can just take the fish egg, take the brains, take the organs, put them in a blender, blend it, and you just water the plant with it or the whole fish even better. The meat of a fish is just carbon. It's all carbon, so it's flying into the roots. When it's a liquid, it flies like Superman, basically. That's, I eat water sometimes with tuna fish. But tuna fish, that's just pure meat tuna fish. Good tuna fish, Italian one. Uh, the Italian ones and, uh, and some other ones that are from the deep Mediterranean, very good ones, and so on. I'll show that uh, uh, later in the video how to do that. But this is totally, uh, totally even dumb. Because it will take years for this to decay. The plant will grow during the summer season, maybe four months, five months, and that's it. But the, this meat and fish will still be down there decaying and the, this fish will give to the whole plant maybe a gram of atoms because it is all entangled to each other. But if a person took this fish in a blender, he would turn the whole, well 90% of the fish he would turn into individual atoms. And then 90% of these enriched fish atoms will go into the plant. And people, I mean, a person can do that in five minutes of blending. But this, it'll just stay there and plus the atoms will start to decay, go bad, smell and so on underground. But that's okay, a plant even when it takes a rotted, rot, rotted away atoms, it fixes them and turns them into young ones and it, it turns them into healthy ones and so on. A lot of phosphorus and a lot of nitrogen. <laughs> Next, we're not just going to put the tomato right over top of that. That's not how you want to do it. Instead, we're going to put some uh, black leaf. So there, he said that a fish has a lot of nitrogen. 
And what is nitrogen? Nitrogen is actually the cold matter that I mentioned in earlier videos and physics that gives youth. Uh, a lot of carbon atoms are that too. Graphene is that, but a lot more. Nitrogen is a little atom. Graphene is a bigger atom. Carbon atom. So it has a lot more of that energy in it. But nitrogen is simply cold matter and it's very good for greens but not too much of it. If there's too much nitrogen in the greens, they die away because it's the greens are too cold then and they go dead. So techniques that people do, this is in the United States. Uh, there's a, a like uh, they take a fish and they put it under where they plant a tomato. And uh, I use tuna in some. I started, I do not do the meat and everything in in uh, in plants but I do it when the fruit comes some are gonna be tuna fish and so on and so on some meats but uh, there are problems there that occur uh, that I will point out uh, later in some plants I tried some meats but some things uh, happened and everything if people have plants that are like that that are shiny let's say like chilies chilies usually have these types of leaves that sort of reflect, look like sort of like glass and reflect, uh, sort of speak, uh, light more than sort of ones that don't, then those are good to use the meat on and everything. Those types of plants, chilies, habanero chilies and so on. Uh, and the research I did there, I got the habanero plants and I'm planning to do them in, uh, in many different varieties. I got like 10, 15 of them growing. Some are going to be made out of totally Amazon type of environment. Some are going to be made total like out of a desert environment and so on and so on. Some are going to be totally winter environment, a different type of chilies, habaneros and everything. But uh, when people have these types of plants, that's good to use the fish and meat on. That have these types of shiny leaves, uh, those types of plants. That is good on those plants to use some meats, not all of course. But on tomatoes, uh, especially these uh, little cherry ones that he's using, it doesn't really sound like a good idea. But now I'll show how they're doing it. Uh, uh, and that's sort of like a farmer thing that doesn't really go through physics of what they're doing actually. Well, like that. So we've got some moss bunker here. I'm going to slice it into about threes to help it break down quicker. I'm not going to show you that though. See, so now he says, uh, I mean, here it seems the farmers aren't really thinking about, I mean, this is a gardener, not a farmer, okay? It's just somebody who has his own garden and, and everything. This is also somebody I watch when I pick up some little ideas about farming because I don't really know some details about farming because uh, that's, uh, haven't done it for a long time and everything. But uh, now he said he's going to break it down into three parts so that it breaks down quicker. I mean, and there, when you put a fish on, underground, number one, animals are going to come over, worms, bugs, and everything. They're going to smell it and eat it. All ants and so on and so on would go toward it a lot and everything. Number two is for the fish to break down into individual atoms so that some atoms actually go into the roots. It'll take a year or two for that to happen. Yeah, the fish is buried on the ground, so it will enrich the ground. That is correct. That's all meats do that on top of the ground and underground. But that will happen in a year or two. But the plant, this plant only grows that he's uh, putting in the ground is a tomato that will grow during the summertime, maybe four or five months, and that's it, and the plant is gone there. And now he says he'll break it down into three pieces to put it on the ground so that it breaks up, down uh, faster. You know, but uh, but to point that out, uh, that is totally useless and totally totally a dumb idea, because it's not going to help the plant anything. And if any atoms of this fish go into the plant, it'll be in micrograms. It'll be that small, a small amount of atoms. It will not even be a gram. It'll be micrograms. Number two, the fish will be falling apart and smelly, stinky, and those bad falling apart, uh, chemistry changed, atoms will go into the plant that won't then even help it that much. So I'll leave you guys long after I'm finished. Alright, I have this sliced up in threes now. 
One thing I wanted to mention is you want to make sure you're playing this deep because you could have some animals and stuff trying to dig it up. So it works well with the tomatoes, I think, because we're going to have it nice and deep. So I'm going to even dig even a little more. Take a little more of the sand out. And then at the bottom, we're going to have this, this moss bunker, this fish. I'm going to put it in three different pieces, just like that. I've often heard people just using fish heads, but I wanted to get something with all the guts and everything in it, because I think that'll add a lot of trace minerals, because this fish is going to already add a lot. So now he said some people use fish heads. Now, fish head has eyes, has brains in it, has and so on. And these fish are small, these are young fish. So that's not even a bad idea. But one would take a fish head, because they're thrown away into the garbage anyway, and whiz it in a blender. And then all those rich young atoms of brains, eyes, and things will go turn into a liquid with water, and then it's poured in. And then while these atoms are new, fresh, and full of energy, then they go into the plant, and they are preserved as plant, and will not turn into anything bad then. So that's one fast thing that can be pointed out. The meat of the fish is all carbon, so it's all foam. It's all going to be foam, so it will flow into the plant fast, and the plant would be made out of it. But this way is totally useless and totally doesn't really help much at all. Some animals would go out of it, but maybe it has some liquid parts in it that would just drain out in time and everything, nitrogen and so on. A lot of phosphorus and a lot of nitrogen. Next, we're not just going to put the tomato right over top of that. That's not how you want to do it. Instead, we're going to put some uh, black leaf mulch, which is basically just a compost, on top of that. I'd say about that much. This way, the roots can grow down into it. Next one. See, now he says he's going to take the ground and put that much of it uh, above, the, uh, above the fish. And then put the plant over that. But what that is saying, the water will fall and whatever good atoms and atoms it picks up from the fish, the water will just take down uh, uh, as it is watered each day that it's watered and so on and so on. So most of those good atoms of the fish and atoms of the fish will just go underground. Gravity will make them go down and uh, so that's basically useless. But by the time the roots get to it, it'll be all falling apart and everything. Number one, number two, only it's about that big. Roots go spherically on all weights. So a little roots that get there, only a small amount of the fish that way will get into the plant actually. We're gonna add some of this black leaf mulch, which is basically just a compost. Another thing the fish is gonna do is add a create a better bacteria domain soil, which is good for tomatoes and annuals like this. So we've got about I say that much of the black leaf mulch in the compost. Next, we're going to get our tomato ready. We're going to pop off these lower leaves. Any of the leaves that are going to be buried, we want to take off. You don't want to bury any of the leaves. And the tomato will root from the stem. So we'll flip it over. As you can see, we've watered. So now he says he takes off the leaves. And okay, that's not that much a bad idea. That's correct. The, the roots will come out of these parts of the, of the stem that is bearing underground, like till there. But still, the main root system is right there. These roots will always be a lot smaller than these, and these are the main roots. And when one waters, he should sort of, uh, it's good to know where they are and to aim the watering at them all the time. I heard it just the other day, so it's not really dry. <coughs> We'll put that right at the bottom there. Noticing the height that we're still going to have some of these weeds sticking out, but we're burying the majority of this. Thing. And there, out uh, working with one of my friends, he actually just turned 81 years old, and he's got burying the majority of the stem. Now the big point about this would be he should have put the, the the plant down first, and then the fish right there over the roots. So as the water falls, it picks up the atoms of the fish and they go into the roots a lot, a lot more than the way he did it, number one. Number two, the fastest and smartest thing to do is to take the whole fish with it. Then 90% of the atoms of the fish will be fresh and good and they'll go into the roots, all of them, at like one pour in a three, four days, you know. That's how, that's, 
uh, that's when it's observed through that physics. One would take the whole fish with it in a blender, five, seven minutes, it turns all into a liquid. Most of it that is carbon and meat will just be foam and then it's poured to the plant, it all goes into the plant and it's good. And the plant preserves it as plant and then those are good atoms of a fish that enrich the plant. But this way it's just useless and maybe in micrograms less than one gram of the fish will actually get into the plant when it's done that way. So just thought to point that out. Uh, some people are doing some things, uh, but it seems they don't know what they're really doing and everything. The only thing that goes into the plant is, uh, is at the size of molecules and atoms. That's the only thing that goes into the ground. Yeah, the fish will enrich the ground, but in a year or two, and this tomato plant will probably grow just summertime, which is four months, five months. So that, I would point out, is totally useless and not really a good idea, totally dumb even to say, because gravity will pick up all the atoms and most of them will just go under the roots and under the plant and they won't even go into the plant when it's seen through physics. But if you put the fish over the roots, like right there where the stem is, then a lot more of them would go into the roots, of course which is from a gravity's point of view. <laughs> but that too isn't really all that helpful because most of those atoms would be decaying and falling apart. So that might even mess up the fruit and the plant because they would might stink and so on. But when one takes a fresh fish, whizzes it in a blender, all the atoms are fresh and good and they go into the plant fresh and good, full of energy, and then the plant enriches them even with more energy and that's that. I do have some, some plants that now started giving fruit and I'm watering them now with, with tuna fish and everything. And I'll show that now a little bit later in the show. Next we're going to back that with some black leaf mulch. So then he adds the, the grounds, different types of grounds and he buries it and uh, and uh, now people can see there, people concentrate a lot on the land. What's in the land and the, that goes into the, into, the, into the plant. And yet that is correct. But when one does things in a blender, that's all the stuff that's going into the plant. And gives a lot richer, a lot better plants and everything. Because number one, it's all turned into a liquid in like minutes. So that ensures that it will all go into the plant. Number two, that ensures that all those atoms are in the water, sticking to it. So as the water goes into the plant, so are all those atoms following it, full of energy, rich, young, and so on. And this way, half of these things go, rain falls, carries them all over the place and everything. So now let's show about that a little bit uh, later in the video. So I'm going to show now. I started now because one plant is almost, one chili is almost about to give, uh, to give uh, fruit. It started, so I'm using tuna fish. It's a Rio Mare, that's like an Italian one from Italy and it's with water. So no oil, it doesn't have any oil in it. If somebody uses ones with oil, then all the oil should be like poured away, poured out, not used, because it's not good for the plant and everything. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in so people see, uh, to show how that goes and everything. Because they use a the fish, they bury it on the ground. That's totally like useless. And all that good atoms and parts of the fish, they just rot away there for no reason. But this is a totally better way to do it. Okay, so when the tuna fish is done, that's done like very, very quickly. And I just thought to show that to people. Uh, it's all foam. Tuna fish, it's basically, that's just the meat in there in the can. So that's all foam. Foam and water is just what remains when tuna fish is done. So I can show people, it's all just foam. Because that's all carbon. 
most of the time when this blending is done the stuff on top that's foam that's now individual carbon atoms leaving from the liquid and the foam is most of the stuff that for sure goes into the roots because foam is now chemically sticking together individual to themselves carbon atoms of the fish and uh, now a person can see that it's all foam I didn't use it long well, but two or three minutes is enough for a tuna fish uh, there is some color showing that it is still a little bit of the color of the meat but that's because I just did it for a few minutes because this is just to show to show in the video but uh, but it's all foam and that is because it's individual carbon atoms and that in that then they are now healthy and good from the can preserved this this is steamed tuna fish so it's not really cooked and everything but okay if somebody was to use a, a tuna fish fresh and late and that was fresh and not cooked at all then that would be even better probably but it doesn't make much difference this is just as good as that the plant this is the plant that I use it on and I would show there that it has sort of like a hill not a hill but like a volcano here it's a lot better seen uh, that's like a hole around where it is and that's how I make the land uh, just to make sure that all the water that I pour in and all the stuff goes directly into the roots because the roots of this one are still small not all over the place or this one so I have like a little volcano of land around it and then it's just poured in and that foam that's what it looks like right there well some parts are left inside I just didn't whiz it that long but maybe five minutes four minutes is enough for tuna fish so that's what one gets when he pours it in uh, this one is now giving fruit right there it started with the flowers uh, one is fertilized I think that one right there and uh, now I started on it with the tuna fish this is the one where that's gonna be Red Bull and the one for best for going to the gym and going for sports and everything that's this plant right here next to it <coughs> I'm just waiting so that it starts with the flowers it's almost there and then Red Bull and all those things are starting with it and everything and people will observe that in the future videos as well so that's what one gets right there all the foam and sometimes it just stays on top so I would pour this in foam I would wait for most of it to go under and then I would pour more water over this foam then the water will pick it up and I would wait for that water to leave and then I would pour some more water and so on and so on and when I see that it's wet at the bottom then that means it's enough it's the whole pot is full and that's it but uh, the smart thing to know about uh, tomatoes and these uh, some of these vegetables plants is uh, they're a lot better to do in pots because if this was outside well some of the roots would be meters long and then somebody would need like a whole lot of more tuna fish and everything and but any tuna fish is good canned it doesn't have to be some expensive one Italian one or anyone or anything like that it can be any tuna fish it's usually good and, and anything sardines are actually a lot even better than tuna fish they're actually better atoms people might not believe that but sardines actually have stronger atoms and and uh, more more sort of a uh, more uh, more aromatic so to speak than the tuna fish so so the sardines ones are actually even stronger but they would probably mess up the taste of the whole vegetables and things so it might not be a good idea as far as taste is concerned but sardines and chilies might go well and something like that that type of blend and everything so some habanero plants could be made even out of sardines they're actually very good for that because they are from the Amazon and everything this is also a local plant and I can show right there the leaves 
uh, they are not shiny as people can see they're sort of like rough and green but they're sort of like rough one right there that one I would cut off when dry on the whole plant that's the only one that's sort of going yellow and bad so I would cut those off but maybe it's because it's close to the ground the other ones are doing well and green and everything the flowers are right there the fruit starting and fertilized and on top it looks green and okay and everything <laughs> and the one next to it is a similar version about that it's even taller but the flowers have not started yet the flowers there are still like that but then I cut away most of these at the bottom branches and now the flowers are sort of kick starting and going faster so that too is a good idea if somebody has a lot of flowers but they are small like that but they are small sort of like that well then uh, it needs to be pruned and everything if one wants fruit faster that is and so on so these are the habanero chilies and they have sort of like a shiny shiny leaf uh, because they're from the Amazon in the Amazon. There is tons of meat. There is tons of insects tons of uh, a lot of things So the plant adapted to become shiny like this That's simply because it is supposed to have a lot of meat in it and bugs and all kinds of types of animals Atoms of them are probably naturally in the Amazon in these habanero plants because that's from the Amazon is the habanero chili plant originates from there but people can see whenever there is a shiny leaf like that those types of plants are very good to make out of meats and fish and everything uh, when it is sort of like this this is like a local this is like one of the local uh, tomato plants well this is not really that good for the meat because I explained that like right there see it is changing color these dark spots right there that's because of the meat in it these dark right there spots so it doesn't really ch the meat changes it so to speak uh, it, it's not gonna hurt it it's okay and everything but it's not it's like it's not designed for that one can even see right here that the leaf is sort of like a little bit starting to uh, well change and doesn't look as good as the other ones that don't have it in it the other ones that don't have the meat in it they look greener and sort of healthier and better that's because this plant isn't used to having meat in it for thousands 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 of years and it adapted to be made out of things that is more ground more fertilizers and more like animal waste and more water but these habanero plants even today in the Amazon are made out of meats bugs insects because the Amazon is full of those things dead animals dead plants all over the Amazon are all over the place and they flow into the plants all the time the the parts of animals the parts of uh, the parts of uh, plants well, let's say this is a chili in the Amazon well ants would come over and prune it they would cut off one leaf or something like that and then it would fall to the ground and drip and so on so the Amazon is like the most enriched forest right now on the planet you could say and this is a chili from there that originates from there and it's still shiny and everything and that shows a person when a leaf is shining like that that uh, that type of plant could be made out of meats fish and everything so thought to point that out but many of these these are all chili habaneros right there and this section right here which is sort of like 15 of them a little bit more and everything so there is 15 of them and some will be made sort of like a desert environment which will have sand and many minerals and the plant and fruit will be made out of those then one will be totally like an Amazon version of these habaneros those videos will be in the summer of course about that 
and uh, let's say one of these like this one will there will be uh, dead bugs in the blender there will be parts of animals that people throw away like let's say brains and uh, and uh, some type of organs that are thrown away and everything and meats and everything and so on and then a few of these habaneros I will make like that like a total Amazon environment natural one then a few more of them like those I would make a total desert type so more rock more minerals and the plant will be made out of that then some other ones will be experiments like some new things for them and so on and then all the habaneros when they give fruit then I'll see all the differences and everything and that will be in following videos as well and so on but the Amazon currently that is very interesting to point out this is this chili plant is from the Amazon and that shows me that that leaf is shiny like that and stronger than these local ones because it is for thousands of years used to it's used to having meat in it bugs in it and parts of all animals that are in the Amazon in it because the animals the Amazon is full of dead dead animals all over the place and the atoms of those animals go into the plants of course all the time non-stop so that's the physics of that to point out that's one of the 10 the 100 that's one of the 100 million uh, natural ones carbon atoms different ones and so on that are that are in nature so one of these a few of these habanero chilies will be sort of like that type of version uh, like a lot of different types of animal meats the, these plants will be made out of those and so on and uh, one thing also to point out here is never to use honey when plants are this small honey will not kill them but it will prevent them from growing when plants are this small honey clogs up their root system in like few days and then they stop growing immediately and then they are like then they they just sit there and they don't grow at all so that was a mistake I made didn't really think about that but then I cleaned that all up and changed the land so that it's uh, that it's clean and everything and okay and now they're growing nicely that they're returning to normal to grow and everything because sometimes I think about thousand things like the atoms the quantum realm the fruit this and that this and that and then I just forget some things and and I would water these little plants with honey but it wasn't a good idea at all so thought to point it out so people can watch out not to do that when the plants are small then no honey at all and nothing sticky and cloggy and so on so this is now a, a quick part about the Amazon that I just thought to show uh, in the Amazon there is like uh, I just showed uh, recently uh, in the Amazon there is like uh, there is like thousands of thousands of uh, animals thousands of plants and everything uh, animal waste which is mostly meat and everything and that enriches the earth non-stop 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 when there is a whole huge animal and plant life going on like in a big forest or in the Amazon here people can see that the ice glaciers are receding and are not going to be as much in the future as they were in the past so all these white areas here Russia Canada and Greenland are going to be forests in the future rich full of plant life full of uh, animals and so on and then in the future animals will more move up to those areas which is Russia and Canada and Greenland and go to those forests because those are old forests and everything but people are cutting them just for wood but those are basically most of the forests we got and everything and so on that have at least some enrichment which is away from the equator at the equator we got the Amazon we got Africa and we got Indonesia and so on then in between is all desert Sahara and the Middle East and everything and United States Nevada and everything is turning into a desert but the desert too can be uh, through a different type of way of physics can be turned into forest as well as everything 
but up there, Canada and Russia, those are forests, untouched forests. They are full of things, just the temperature, uh, yeah, it's too cold to live there, but some animals can live there, of course, but just some special type of animals. <coughs> but uh, as soon as it gets hotter, global warming, people have heard of that before, uh, of course, uh, but a lot of plant, uh, animal life will move to those forests if global warming really happens and everything. So there is an upside to the, to, to the whole thing and everything. But if there is too much water, then the water can be used to redo the, the deserts, to refill them with water and to turn them into forests and everything if there is too much water going on in the seas and everything. Uh, a simple way, uh, through graphing sheets, it can be done that water goes through, but the salt does not. Through graphing layers and some type of technologies, graphene changes its uh, density and uh, its size simply by putting temperature in it. So that's very easily done in a technology. And then a lot of water can flow into the deserts and turn them into turn them into turn them into forests and everything without the salt being in those waters. That's even easy to do in technologies. It's already being done in some places and everything. <laughs> but uh, the big thing about this is uh, Russia and Canada have forests. All forests. Yeah, it's too cold to have a, a exotic forest like the Amazon. But they are forests and there are types of animals that live there that have uh, very thick furs and so on. Tigers, bears, eagles and so on, reindeer and so on. Uh, but uh, those are the old forests that are left there. So even those atoms there are special types of physics that can turn them into, into very, uh, trop very good forests and very good foods and very good things and everything. So. To go on to the well, Amazon, beats them all. At number one, you've probably guessed it by now, is the Amazon tropical rainforest. Covering land in nine nations, the Amazon represents more than half of the world's remaining rainforest. Not only is the Amazon the world's largest rainforest, it's all... ...land in nine nations, the Amazon represents... So, that's the Amazon right there, the map. So, it's very, very big, almost as big as a country. Uh, but to point out right there, that's all forests. There they are cutting wood and everything, but that's all forest. There there is tons of animals, tons of plants, tons of enriched atoms, natural ones. Not as enriched as, as my plants, you would say, because I do that tons more than even in the Amazon is being done. Uh, there's the Amazon River going. Uh, but uh, the Amazon has tons of uh, types of uh, enriched atoms that other places do not have at all. Because it has a very rich even, even life of animals there. Animals eat animals and then little bits fall to the ground and go into the plants. Animals have eat meat, so the waste of animals is all meat probably right here except the animals that eat plants, but which are, there is a lot more of them in the Amazon that eat animals. And then people would think, some people go, why is nature so this way and that way? But animals eat animals, but then that feeds the plants. So it's like a cycle of creating uh, richer, richer and more enriched atoms in one, fo in one forest. But people don't, uh, because this physics is new, people have never looked at it, maybe from that point of view, uh, which in more general. In the Amazon there is also ants come over and they eat away a part of the leaf. And the leaf falls to the ground and starts dripping there and everything. So it's like a cycle of enriched atoms uh, that happens by itself. Uh, in my writing, one uh, important thing that I had was just to make an enriched forest full of fruit and that's all we would need to do and uh, the rest uh, it is called the alpha forest so the first forest on earth that ever was the alpha forest or the Eden project 
how the first uh, how the first uh, first forest on earth was, which was the richest, the best and richest Adams that there ever were. And uh, and uh, and uh, Eden, people have heard the Eden story, where even the tree of life was. A person would take fruit from it and he would live for forever. So, but from ancient times, old times, those stories have remained. The Bible records the story of Adam and Eve and so on. So, but the Amazon is the best forest on planet Earth as far as enriched atoms are concerned. And that is because it has the most animals, the most different types of animals, and uh, the most activity of animals eating each other, eating plants, and so on and so on. Uh, I mean, why would anacondas exist in, only in the Amazon? There are some big pythons in, the, in, the, uh, in Africa, but in the Amazon, anacondas exist. Anaconda is just a dinosaur snake. Basically, but the reason why it exists only in the Amazon is because only there are the atoms that can sustain it. That's why there is anacondas in the Amazon, through my physics and my understanding. It's more than half of the world's remaining rainforest. Not only is the Amazon the world's largest rainforest, it's also the most biodiverse, with one in ten species on the planet existing here and nowhere else, including one in five bird species on Earth, and even one in five fish species on the planet live within the Amazon River Network. Together, the Amazon is the world's largest collection of plants and animals, with 16,000 species of tree alone. So there it says, there is 16,000 species of trees only in the Amazon, that don't exist anywhere else, and that is all the different types of trees that exist only in the Amazon, 16,000. Uh, in my country, I could think of like maybe 30, and that would be that. But that's 16,000 only in the Amazon. And why do those, so many trees exist there? Now, uh, thousands of years ago, the whole planet Earth was like that. People don't maybe know that and everything. And the 16,000 of trees exist there, that's thousand, thousands of fruits that those trees give. And then that feeds the animals. <laughs> Which would be the obvious answer to that. But we could take any of those trees from the Amazon, enrich them, and who knows what would come of that. That would just be one way of looking at it. And the and uh, we have uh, that uh, whole concept of the alpha forest was actually even simple. Uh, in the forest that would be man-made, of course, in that project, we would only need like sewers. But the sewers, canals that go through the land, would not be to carry sewer, but to carry water to water the roots of the plants. And then all types of enriched atoms would be whizzed and let uh, through those sewers to go, through those pipes to go to the roots and to the whole forest. The animals there would just be let there and they would live, live the way they live. Any type of animal, cow, chicken, wild or domesticated types of animals. And uh, just because the animals would eat and live in an enriched forest, they would naturally become enriched, become enriched and so on. And they would get bigger and bigger and bigger as new generations come and so on. Current estimates project there to be 390 billion trees to exist within the forest. Animals found here... Now people can see right there, these are very big trees. So even very old trees. So some of these trees can have tons of those enriched atoms from, from thousands and thousands of years ago. And, and, but the big thing is that we could even make more enriched and more better forests if we wanted to. And even in deserts through this new physics and everything. Because enriched atoms, enriched trees, well, they can live in a desert with no problem, but just when a correct evidence in physics is found out about that. See, now I'm sort of taking it step by step, and during the winter I'm going to plant and have outside winter plants that are supposed to give fruit in December and be winter type plants and everything. Chilies, habanero chilies I'm planning for that. 
and and the uh, Italian cherries, like I pointed out earlier. Here include the jaguar, the anaconda, anteaters, spider monkeys, poison dart. Here include the jaguar, the anaconda. And there's the anaconda. Okay, this is a very small one. But its scales are bigger, people can tell. So why does an anaconda only live in the Amazon? because it's a very big, big snake. Now, anacondas, by some estimates, some evidence says, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. They don't really grow. Nobody ever saw an old anaconda. They just get bigger and bigger and bigger and they don't really, they don't really grow. Some lizards have that, the crocodiles, uh, alley, crocodiles also as well. Uh, you can see an old crocodile. They just change color, become darker, but they're not really old. As far as that, they die for some other reasons, not because they grow old. So why does an anaconda, the biggest snake in the world, exist only in the Amazon? Because Amazon has the richest atoms out there. And the anaconda eats then the richest atoms out of all the snakes on earth. And its blood has the best plasma in it. So an anaconda probably has more plasma in blood than even a two-year-old uh, human child and so on, especially a young anaconda. The problem is every individual human and every individual animal has that plasma to itself that its body makes and the chemistry of its blood makes. Every person has a different blood. So only his blood has his type of plasma in it that's good for him. And only his body makes it that's good for him. So it's individual. Animals, I don't know, but on people, it's sort of like that. But even if that is done, uh, even if that is observed, I mean, if we got an anaconda, how would we even take the plasma out of its blood and into our blood? Because plasma is subatomic particles. And we can't really get it out of we can't really get it out of the the the, the blood then. That would be the problem. Uh, but maybe we even could. The problem is uh, plasma as soon as it touches something it goes into it. So that's the type of subatomic particles that go into atoms. So it, whatever it touches, it's gonna go into it. So and that's how it feeds the body in the first place. So those are some problems from taking that plasma and getting it into us. Which was a vaccine for, for returning youth that I wrote about earlier, but that's sort of complex. There is a possibility. In the snakes, pythons and anacondas, they have the most extreme digestive uh, liquid that fries everything, bones, it turns everything into atoms. Bones, whatever an anaconda eats, it turns into food like, uh, it turns into atoms actually very extremely quickly. Pythons have that same type of, type of digestive system. The anteaters, spider monkeys, poison dart frogs, iguanas, macaws, toucans, parakeets, the brown-throated sloth, and so many more. There are many theories as to why this region is so dense with endemic species found nowhere else on Earth. And and there, uh, people can see that some of the deadliest animals, even frogs, exist actually in the Amazon. And that is especially because it has the most enriched atoms there, uh, as nowhere else on Earth. Amazon has the temperature, has the water, and has the plant life and everything. Now, some explanation of physics and past show that the whole world was actually like the Amazon at once. Even the Sahara Desert, some evidence says, was once just like the Amazon. But this plant actually is interesting to point out because uh, it's sort of, as far as color is concerned, doing the best. And I can see it from the top and everything. And I pumped tons of greens from my plants into it which have eggs which have a lot of different things in them 
So this is sort of like what uh, an Amazon plant would look like, which is very rich and full of everything. But even in the Amazon, uh, they don't have blenders, of course, people know that. Very little amounts of things fall into the ground, a little pieces of meat and so on. Because even the little pieces of uh, meat and everything that fall to the ground, well then ex insects even come over and eat them. So still into the plants, not that much of that stuff goes. But when it's done in a blender, tons of it go into the plants so they can be even a lot, a lot better through this physics and science done than even in the Amazon and even in the best forests. But this is sort of maybe like 10, 5,000 years ago what a plant in the Amazon would look like, like a very good rich one. So all the leaves are green, all of them are doing very, very good. Even the ones down there are doing very well. This is all the bad that that is happening uh, because the leaves are close to the ground. That little tip right there, that's the only thing that's going bad on this plant. This one is broken, but that's because I hit it with the door. So because here is the door that that leads out to the terrace. But all of it is green, all of it is doing very, very well. The suckers are very, very green and doing good. The flowers are right there. It's fairly small, small, smaller compared to the dinosaur plant and the other bigger ones. But it's giving fruit already right there and right there. So flowers are blooming and everything. So And plus, uh, only two, all the suckers are growing on it. One is right there going up very well there are two right there sticking out doing very well going green and doing good there's one even right there going up also doing well so all the suckers are on it one little one right there so they're all like sort of express uh, growing very very fast when i pumped my greens for my plants into this plant and so on so it's it sort of like kick started it to grow very fast it even has wood very very fat right there so it's growing very very well just because I pumped all those rich greens into it so that's even evidence people can tell right there that that helps plants and makes them healthy and good like a lot a lot and I cut off that one leaf not a sucker but a leaf there and one more and the rest is all natural and everything and its leaves are like huge they're already just as big as the ones on the dinosaur plant some are some are even sort of bigger that's like a big big leaf well sort of as big as the, the ones on the dinosaur plant just this is a different type of plant it's not that type of plant these here are also already that big and so on these as well and they're extremely extremely green as people can see and healthy and so on so so that shows that that the physics is really working and it's really going well but the main thing is right there there is a few flowers fertilized and when the fruit comes how it's gonna look at everything there's like two three flowers well actually all four of them seems they are fertilized closing already so that the fruit is coming and the new one right above it is are just starting to open the flowers but that's i presume what a plant in the amazon thousands of years ago it, when the when the forests were very full and rich although it is like that even today most likely the amazon because it's uh, untouched by people and and uh, full of animals and plant life and everything but that's sort of what this physics returns things to and everything so now, as I explained uh, a little bit about this physics of biology and everything, uh, I could point out right there the dinosaur tree and what I was really doing with it. So every time it was watered, it had 
uh, it had plants in it, it has the eggs in it, it had tomatoes in it, it had uh, many different types of eggs in it, and so on. So it is sort of alike, like something in the Amazon. But then I would take the greens from these plants and I would water it again. And then again, those greens that turn into greens, I would water it again, and so on and so on. And that's why it is growing so well, so beautifully, and has that extreme big energy to grow naturally and everything and so on. But that is just the beginning part of the physics. One would have to follow all the atoms in the quantum realm and everything to know what's going on. And, uh, and there it is. Today, how well the first tomato is going on it. There it is. Today it can be seen very, very well. And there it is, the first tomato on the dinosaur plant growing very, very nicely and so on. And it is sort of like, uh, it's not round yet, but it's going like sort of pointy down and so on. And the other one, which is a f bit further away, is right there but it is still smaller compared to that one but it is a tomato and it is growing but sort of slower and so on but just to point out when people understand all that physics how things go in the wild like in the Amazon and in such places and naturally how plants and animals are enriched then people can understand how this all makes sense and everything to make enriched plants enriched uh, food for us and for animals and for <laughs> and for everybody and then people can really understand how that makes sense and everything and uh, tons more uh, videos will be following on all those things and everything technologies and everything but a lot about plants and so on